Hey, what's up, people? Holly Benton fans. Uh, I got a whole stack of Holly Bentons uh, today. I was going to go to Toman for the weekend and film a whole bunch of videos there, which would have been easier logistically, but uh, that didn't work. People got sick. You know, shit happens. So they're here, which is uh, they're right there. A whole bunch. I don't really exactly know what. Uh, I haven't opened them. I'm going to do that now. So if you're interested in a certain model that's listed, uh, I don't know, here, I guess, uh, then skip to that timing. Um, I can't really tell you what you see here because I don't know what's in the pile. So I'm going to open the pile one by one. I'm going to check them out, uh, give you my first impression, give you, uh, I'm going to tune it up. And I'll, I'll, you know, fast forward through those parts. Um, and then going to, you know, give you a couple of sounds. My very first impression of the guitar. There will be demos for each of them coming. But that's my first impression. Uh, and uh, that's all going through the Dietzel Powell, which has three channels built in reverb. And that's going through the Torpedo Studio. Well, obviously, Harley Benton fans, I know that the Dietzel Powell with its 2,000 euro price tag and the Torpedo Studio with the 1,600 euro price tag might not be exactly the amp that you're playing those through. Um, yet, it's the amp that's standing there and it's flexible enough to actually give you a rough idea of what the guitar can do. And um, that's how I'm doing it. Try to change my mind. You can't. Ha! So uh, I'm going to take number one from the top, whichever one that is. I have no idea. Trusty unboxing knife right here. So as, uh, as we can see, we have a very, very black guitar, um, which is an eight string. So, I don't even know what the model of this is. I give the progressive. Uh, you know what? We're gonna go online. And we're gonna go ahead and try to find this thing. Harley Benton 8 string. Progressive series. Here we go. So, this is the uh, Harley Benton R548. No. I can't fucking read. R458 BK, as in black, like metal, um, progressive series. Um, it's very black. It's got a fixed bridge. It's got, as I can see, Daddario strings in it. Eight string pack. Really nice in bronze here, or messing, or uh, whatever. Um, bolt on neck, five piece. Uh, this is Linda is basswood, I think. Yes, uh, this is a maple neck. Maple neck right here. Basswood body. Very sleek design. Relatively thin. Well, actually, no, it kind of like tails off, trails off to the side for ergonomic feel. The headstock's kind of neat, okay, kind of, kind of neat headstock. Um, black tuners, black hardware. I like that the, uh, I like that the inlays are on the side, makes it look neat. Let's see how she's tuned. Might be a half step lower because we're on B flat right here. Now we're on E. We're gonna go normal tuning here. Very smooth tuners. Okay. Three-way switch, volume, tone. Uh, blah, 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 nines to 65, 65, um, and it is tuned in normal E and then B and F sharp, so it's not a half step lower, uh, that's what it says, 24 frets, blah, 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 D, speed D profile, can you tell that this is a speed D, I don't know, the problem with A strings is, uh, that they usually go flap, 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 and, um, in, the, the, the tonal definition isn't really that great in the low register, even on super high-end 8 strings, unless you might have fan frets uh, or multi-scale, as they call it. Looks neat. 
that one dot here is a little bit woo. But other than that, I can't really see a lot of crap on here that I would bitch about. The headstock is of course shafted on, glued on, because it's angled. Otherwise, there'd be way too much wood going away. <laughs> Very, uh, a little bit bright there. in terms of the impulse you're getting. It's 149 euro. I mean, this is most certainly the absolutely ultra least expensive way to dabble in eight strings. If you want to play around with the eight stringiness. I think seven string is cool. Eight is just what's the point. But hey. Very clearly a country kind of guitar. I know what you want to hear. It works, and um, to be frank, I wouldn't pay more than 150 bucks for an 8-string guitar because it's a fun thing to do, but it's not something I'm really interested in because down there all you do is... And that's all you can really do down there. It's not defined in any way or, frankly, musically useful in any way unless you just want to create low noise against your bass player and your vocalist goes... If you know what I mean. So, um, this will probably do the job just like any other eight string 
for a lot more money. Yes, where technically the impulse might be better, where technically the note definition might be a little bit better, but then you're going to pump it through a lot of gain and the rest of your band goes... So, really, does it matter? I don't know. You decide. But... To play around with the idea of an 8 string, 150 bucks is really not bad. So, um, progressive 8 string something 458. Oh, why am I looking through the guitars? Well, because I know that since we have the 8 string, there's got to be a 7 string somewhere. So let's do that right away. And when I'm unboxing it, um, Harley 7 string. So here we have the 457 progressive blah blah blah, which is of course a 7 string. Um, and if you ask me, 7 string makes a lot more sense than 8 string. Because one, well, one of the problems with guitar in general is A. Really? A? No. B. We won't B. Uh, one of the problems is that you get uh, that C and D on the A string are really the lowest Cs and Ds you can get, but those are kind of important notes. And uh, with the 7 string you can actually get C and D right here, which is nice. Um, even for normal rock stuff, just to have the ability to go that low and get um, get that C and D in a, in, a, in a lower version. You don't need super high gain to do that. Um, you don't need to play mega metal. Uh, the note definition down there is still kind of there. Whereas um, on an 8 string, it just gets... It's, you can't really hear anymore what's going on down there. And yes, you can gent with it, obviously. You can do rhythmic things on one note, but then it's simply a low note, whichever note that is. A huh? little bit of Freddy bus, Fred bus right there. The physics of a 7 and 8 string guitar are difficult. Rep replicating that in an inexpensive instrument is very, very difficult. This is 139 bucks. Um, I would never ever get a black guitar because you would see everything on there. Oh, see, that lick now is on there for... No. <laughs> Someone's gonna buy this and have my germs on it. Um, no, you will see everything on it. So the people that get this back at Toman in quality control, they're gonna have to wipe it off big time. Um, again, three position switch, volume tone, fixed bridge, which is a good idea, string through body, Base wood body, uh, four point connection here, maple neck, everything pretty much the same. The uh, tuner heads look a little bit crookedy, especially those two. They look as if they. Well, I mean, they kind of follow the. They follow the swerve of the neck there, so. Uh, of, the, of the headstock. Yeah, I guess that's okay. That's what they have to do. But in the back, it looked kind of weird. Headstock is very metally. So I just tuned it to normal E with a D uh, with a B underneath. Yeah, black jack plate, which is it's just all black. Dario strings. Okay, definitely been set up because you can see that the. Uh, that there's some scratches underneath here, so it's definitely been the intonation has been changed, which means the team at uh, Toman does their job. A good dose of high end in there, a good dose of high frequencies. Not as bad as the the eight string. The eight string was a little bit piercing. Balanced. I like it.
fretboard looks neat. Big ass maple neck. Very neat cutout here, so and, and rounded off for your convenience. For your convenience, very neat. Again, the body feels very ergonomic. Everything kind of is slanted towards you. I like it. That just the blackness is too much blackness. Blackidity. <laughs> sounds a little bit more on the cheaper side. I mean, you can hear that ink. On the other hand, how many people will ever play this guitar clean? Maybe only, you know, for your intro. And then you go, you know, possibly. Thirty-nine euro. Just for shits and giggles, let's do this. For those of you guys out there who are who are trying to find out, you know, should I buy a seven string? One hundred thirty-nine euro. Okay, one hundred thirty-nine euro does the job. Let's put it this way: it's not well does the job. Right here, seven string Ibanez, a thousand euro. Just so you have a comparison, okay? Uh. as you please, whatever you want. Before we continue, I'm gonna go and pee. And I'm back from peeing. Um, I can already tell you what I'm gonna tell you in my review of those two guitars. It's pretty simple. If you don't know whether seven or eight string guitars are your cup of tea, these are very, very inexpensive guitars to find out if it's your thing. Play around with it, use it in a band, they will absolutely do the job. If you then find out that the seven or the eight string is your thing and you're gonna continuously use it, get yourself a nice one. Get yourself one for however much money, um, custom build, whatever you want, but to check them out to see if it's your thing. 139, 149 euro, wow, come on. That's, you know, they, they might not be your 708 string forever, but they're definitely a good start. ST. 
ST90SA. Okay, this is the ST90SA. Let's see, ST90SA. What comes up? Nope, 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 nope. Maybe dash 90 is like that. Nope. Maybe this is it. Yes, that's the ST90SA Swamp Ash Deluxe series. Um, I know, which I wouldn't have thought, uh, that Swamp Ash actually is not an inexpensive wood. It's uh, actually more expensive than mahogany. We kind of think mahogany, that's the emperor of woods. <laughs> wood. But um, it ain't, is what they say in the States. Um... Swamp Ash, actually, for some reason, I don't know, I don't remember who told me this, is uh, more expensive, I think. Swamp Ash. So, there's probably a vibrato arm in there somewhere. I wouldn't use it on a guitar in that price range. I'm sorry, ever. I wouldn't. So, I can already tell what's going on here is... This floating vibrato with uh, two points, two point floating, is uh, coming up quite a bit, as you can see here. See, it's coming up. Can you see that? Um, whoa! There's three, three, three springs in the back. I would probably try to tighten them so it's not floating, so that it's kind of sitting, it's sitting on top. I would try to actually make this a fixed one. But, holy crap! I don't know if you can see this, no you can't. The block in here, the vibrato block, the actual piece of metal that the s springs are hanging in is quite thick, which is something that on inexpensive guitars, which this is, it clocks in at 169 euro as of right now, um, you, you, you usually don't find. Uh, that means there should be a nice chunk, a nice attack, but the fact that it's coming up means I'm tuning myself silly. And I would probably try to make this not floating. Because you're always going to have some issues with strings being detuned. All that stuff. So uh, let's see what we have. Blah, blah, blah. C profile, rosewood fretboard, radius, blah, blah, blah. 22 frets, uh, 42 millimeter, double action truss rod, Wilkinson Alnico vintage style single coils, five way switch, tortoise, blah blah blah, deluxe, two point tremolo system. Um, yeah, so you have these vintagey kind of deluxe tuners. Um, guitar feels really smooth, very nice body. I can't possibly tell you how many parts the body is made out of. I might just say one, and I might be lying, but I don't see any parts where it would be glued. Maybe here, maybe here. Yes, right here, there's one. There's definitely one right here. So this might be a two-part body, who knows. Um, just like on other Harley Bentons, this tortoise shell thing so this tortoise shell pickguard looks really bad because it's not actually tortoise shell it's a one two three three ply pickguard which is nice but then the tortoise shell is actually a thin layer on top what the And then there's another. Didn't I just rip this off? I thought I just ripped this. Why? I am flabbergasted right now. I just ripped off the plastic and there was another layer of plastic. And we're now... It looks better. Not so milky anymore. Yes, now it's shiny and much nicer, but you have little plasticky parts everywhere, uh, which I'm not super excited about. It looks better now, but 
it is still not an actual turtle shell pickguard. Uh, if you buy one from the Big F, it's gonna cost you like 50 bucks. Maybe you should do that. You have a real turtle shell thing. Um, this is fake. It looks okay now that I ripped off all the plastic, which is a little bit annoying. We have plasticky but still milky kind of mother of purdy inlays. Um, okay. Let's let's see how she flies. She is. A little bit bitey there. A little bit of the warmth missing that I would want in a S-type guitar. Like some fizzle in it. It's not. It's not a clear, beautiful tone. Ah. Uh. No, 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 sorry, nah, it's, nah, that, that, Ooh. It feels, it feels like a beginner guitar, which usually Harley Bentons don't. They feel like really not beginner guitars. They feel like a lot of value for the money. This feels nice, but it doesn't feel nice. That feels like a cheap beginner guitar. sounds like ooh. Um, the ST62, which, I, which is cheaper than this, um, which I have one of and three students have the ST62. And that's a, it sounds like a real strat stratosphere. Sounds like the stratosphere. <laughs> this sounds, even though it's got the big vibrato block and everything, it's teeny tiny, it, by too bitey. Sounds like a beginner guitar. so impressed by the uh, SG90 SA Swamp Ash Lux. I kind of have a feeling that there's guitars missing. Am I doing this unboxing too early? Uh, it's possible. So here's a guitar that many of you wanted me to test for a long time. Ooh, feels nice. Um, I have a feeling that maybe some guitars are still on the way 
because uh, I think that's the HP 35. Let's see. Uh, HP 35 in, I don't know. VB? This is VB, I think. Yes. Uh, holy shit. But then there's an HP 35 Plus, which is plusy, and uh, where you have split coil operation level control. Uh, that should technically be on the way, but I don't see it right here. So maybe one of the boxes is still coming. Th this plasticky stuff doesn't make the guitars really feel very high endy. Because usually on your high endy guitar, where? Why is that double stuff again? On your more high endy guitars, you don't have plastic to pull off. Um, then again. This guitar clocks in at 179 euro, which is ridiculous. Even if you just put that on the wall, holy shit, that's neat. Um, let's see, VT series, summer hollow mahogany sustain block and F holes. Uh, body is maple, curvy kind of a top right there, curved top. Um, glued in neck, which is Canadian maple. Rosewood fretboard, uh, there's radius and all that, cream binding, cream binding, with the uh, dots a little bit too low on the lower side of the binding, if you ask me, they should have been centered a little bit more, they feel they are right at the bottom and it would be nice if they were centered right there, so I'm gonna bitch about that, double action truss rod, two vintage style humbuckers, in this case, you know, they look dirty from the glue, from this stuff, but that's okay, you can fix that. A uh, two-volume, two-tone, chrome hardware, closed die-cast tuners. Something is... Oh! Oh, well, that's just great. There's some glue residue and stuff floating around in the guitar. There's no jack plate and just a screw there that you will always have to tighten. I don't know why they don't come up with better solutions for this. Let's tune. So the strings apparently are Harley Benton strings, 10 to 46. I like that they put 10s on here. Uh, I don't like that they put Harley Bentons on here. The Darius would have been nicer. Because it really makes a difference. The Harley Benton makes a very inexpensive strings, which is nice, uh, but obviously something I would try to replace as soon as possible. A good set of strings is a good set of strings. I personally play the Dodario NYXL. Of course, yeah, they're 14, 15 bucks, but the NYXL 10 to 46, uh, no, actually, is it 10 to 46? The balance tension, very nice. So let's find out how she flies. feeling that the traditional G-style guitars from Harley Benton are always a class above the F-type guitars. I don't know why that is.
let's look at this if we, if we find crap. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this... Just get rid of this. This pickguard is just... That's just horribly ugly. And it's cut... Weirdly, look at this. It's cut like there's a little of a point in there. Then we have this point. I'm thinking get rid of the pickguard. Because that looks just... Ugh. The, the shape... It's cut. I'm gonna go and um, remove it. I like to remove it, move it. Like to remove it, move it, you know? You know, Madagascar? You know, King Louis? I like to remove it, move it. Remove the pick up. Because uh, I'm thinking this guitar is probably better off without the pickguard. You'll see the F-holes better. And there we go. <sighs> now we have a much prettier guitar. Look at this. Yes, I can live with that a lot better. Because that pickguard was not cut nicely. Um, the back I think the sunburst is done nicely. I'm not a huge violent sunburst or sunbursty kind of guy, but it's done beautifully. Obviously, as always, those little stickers look like ass, but hey, they need them. Um, other than the fact that there's still a lot of crap in here that someone would have to vacuum. Ooh, shit! If I turn this around now, I'm gonna make a big mess. So someone would have to vacuum that out or at least shake it out better. Um, I like that these F-holes are not perfectly F, they're little hook holes. They should be called hook holes. Um, binding is nice. No, I don't really see a lot of crap to bitch about. 170 fucking 9 euro is pretty outstanding. Yeah, dot inlays, could we have... Block inlays, we could. Would we want them? I don't know. I really personally don't care. 179. Let's crank it a bit. Well, let's, let's check out the... This screw right here is kind of flat. It's, uh, it's not shiny. I don't know what the word is. It's not chromed, it's not nickel. It's just something you found somewhere in the back of the workshop. That doesn't feel good. It should be the same nickel as everything else. That feels cheap, I'm sorry. If this justifies the price tag of 179 euro, then fuck the screw. Stick with the clean channel, just crank it up a bit. Well, obviously, they're not yet fully in tune.
Let's contrast and compare. The Angelico EXDC clocking in at about 14, Feels like I need new strings. So, just to give you an idea. First impression at 179 euro, a hell of a thousand, at 139 euro, uh, unbelievably good. That's what I would say. That's uh, what I would say if I said something, which uh, I just did. I'm gonna put this back in the case, because uh, I don't want it on there. Because really, just the way this is cut, the general shape, general shape. General shape, we have to go and get, get, mm, mm, get, nah, get, mm. oh. Let's see what's next. I like the color. Okay, Didario strings again. What is the model number on this? MS, MS60. Let's see. MS60. Vintage white? No. PB. Pelham blue, I would say. Um, this is cool. It's got a racing stripe. Come the fuck on. Matching headstock. Solid feeling tuners. Remember, folks, this is like, you know, tuning them up. They might lose their tuning, that's what happens. Don't bitch about the guitars weren't in tune. They just come out of the box. I like that the neck on this, you'll see in a minute, has been stained a, a tiny bit. Makes it feel vintagey, makes it feel as if it's been in a smoker studio for quite a while. 140 bucks. With hmm, the Dario strings. Frets feel a little bit sharper. Not, not super great. The shape is a little bit weird. Amazingly beautiful high gloss, uh, except for down here where it's not polished right. Eh? What the? Might have to go over this with a polishing cloth. Well, most of it is nicely done high gloss blue with sadly one, two, three little flecks in there, little black flecks. Looks like they don't really have the most uh, clean rooms where they do the guitars. Uh, I really like the Proloid pickguard. That's nice. We have a traditional stop tail piece on here. Whatever these are. On and offs, I would assume. Volume tone. And as I said, this nicely yellowed pedon kind of smoked neck. Traditional stan standard tuners. Let's call them standard. They are uh, matched headstock. Dot, blah, blah, the Wilkinson live vintage style single coils. Deluxe. Deluxe Chrome. And we have nines on here. Um, I frankly hate guitars that have the plug on the front, but that's just a... That's just a more vintagey kind of a thing. We have the blue cable to match it. That's a... Uh, red beard cable, made for me by Paul. Provost. Uh, so... Nothing right now. That's the front. 
That's the back. That's both. Looks really cool, 139 bucks. Sounds a little bit on the cheaper side. I got a. It's always with the Harley Bentons. The S typeish guitars are not on the same level as the G typeish guitars. Whatever you you know, whatever you want to put under those letters, that's just what I'm saying. Very thin neck. Very thin. It feels like this needs to come up quite a bit to get similar volume. There is no more. It's as high as it can possibly go. Kind of planky. Do we have an intonation problem here? A little bit. I'm gonna, I would probably have to work on this a bit. And this way of switching, I know that's a traditional vintage -y style, but I think it's asinine. Personally. <laughs> is difficult. But uh, distorted, much better than, than clean. Clean's uh, distorted. Nice. This guitar looks an awful lot better than it sounds. Um, with the bitiness, the uh, intonation problems, and I just don't quite know how and why I would use this. Looks kick ass. I'm thinking you want to look dirty, like, you know, play some power chords and be all. Not Dave Mustaine. What's that guy from Nirvana? Why am I thinking Dave Mustaine? That's not Nirvana. Um, 
That Nirvana guy. I'm getting so old. It's not Dave Mustaine. Was Dave Mustaine in Nirvana? No. <laughs> Why can't I think of the name of the guy? You know, of that guy. I know he was doing it. Was Mustang or Jazzmaster? One of those. This is in the direction, maybe. Kurt Cobain, thank you. Mustaine. Cobain. That's why. Huh. I'm not that old, apparently. Uh, I love the look. Mm, you're gonna have to figure out if the sound is for you. Mm -mm. Uh, some of you wanted to know about the Harley Benton basses, and this time around we're doing some basses. Um... So, after I tuned, let me check which one that is. Obviously, we're not going through the Dietzel Powell. We're gonna go DI right into here. Or maybe right into here. <laughs> yeah, it also helps if I plug it in. It so helps. There we are. So we have here the, um, I don't know, B450. Let's check it out. 139 euro for the B-450 Black Progressive Series. Um, big ass looking humbuckers in here. Two of them, but small humbuckers. Individually... Uh, attached string thingies, which they call um, uh, double action truss rod, die cast. What's the saddle? What's the Tai Chi inlays? Tai Chi inlays. And then, um, uh, what do they call this thing? Two humbuckers with an active preamp. They have no word for this, um, which is kind of neat. There's something, there's a line underneath, I don't know what that is for. Uh, 24 frets, maple neck, kind of like, you know, the Progressive series. I like the headstock. Um, let's see how she flies. We have one balance, one bass, one treble, one volume. <laughs> Ah, there's active passive when you do something here. Ah, here, passive. Very, very passive. Let me see if I can crank up the volume here a little bit. Nice, nice, very solid. Just very, very, very low on passive. Very, very low.
battery compartment right here. And off and on. Um, 140 bucks. I would say nothing wrong with that. It's uh, it's a little bit work. It makes you work a tiny little bit, which is usually the case by more inexpensive buy uh, uh, with more inexpensive bases. <laughs> It works, it's playable, holds tuning, it's black, so you gotta decide whether you like this. The inlays are original, uh, at this price point, probably almost impossible to beat. It's a tool, it does its job, as I said, a little bit harder to play, a little bit, I don't know if it's the action, it's just you have to dig in a little bit, it makes you work a little bit, but that's not necessarily a horrible thing. CLD41S, 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 let's see, CLD41S, 249, I wish you could smell what I'm smelling right now, I wish this was smell tube um, wow, oh, oh, oh wait, oh. You know when you're at a really nice, expensive furniture store and they have that really nice, real wood furniture? That's what that smells like. Whoa, nice. So this clock's in it. I'm, I'm making it dirty. With... Where? Ah, there was my face. Ooh. Ah, whoopsie. <laughs> whoopsie. Um, hello. 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 That sounds beautiful. We only have uh, my vocal mic to test this right now. Uh, let's see. We have mahogany neck abalone body binding. Sometimes that looks ghastly. On this, it's okay. Um, dovetail construction. Dovetail. Massive. A Sitka spruce top. A Sitka spruce top. A Sitka spruce top, which is, you know, the good stuff. Um, and it's got a rosewood body that's usually mahogany and then rosewood, which is... Hello, Rosewood! Very nice. There's no cutaway, as you can clearly see. Um, there's no pickup. There's, it's just a guitar. Um, look at all the detail in here. Is that wood? I don't know. Um, there's a volute right here. A little bit of a don't break the headstock off thing. Um, where the headstock is shafted on, I can't actually tell you. Gold hardware, usually ghastly, but on this, totally fine. Nice, nice. What else do we have? It's a Dreadnought from the Vintage Solid series. Abalone hexagon inlays, which is nice. And they are, oh my god, the most beautiful, deep abalone, abalone. Look, I don't know if you can even see this. There's a lot of color in there. So... No preamp, no nothing, so we're going to use the good polytune clip. Good tuners, whoa. It's tunable.
sounds fantastic with the exception of the bass. It doesn't sound very round in the low end. It's got a nice, nice brightness to it. Beautiful guitar for 249 euro. Absolutely wow. Everything wow. But a little bit of the the warm roundness is missing for me right now. I'm gonna have to compare this to a couple of my other acoustics and see what happens. So leaves one more. Okay, so this says Fishman. There's a uh, Fishman Isis Plus preamp. There's also a battery included. Very nice. So what is this? A guitar, I know it's a guitar. Uh. I'm gonna cut this off, I don't care. Screw you, damn thing. So this is a CLP-15ME, whatever that is, CLP-15ME, no, CLP-15, ha, ah, here, Hollywood and Custom Line, triple O 12 with dovetail vintage solid series custom line CLP 15 me clocks in at 209 euro right now and um, it's a very small thing that's what she said it's a very small guitar so probably very nice tuners it's probably for the intimate blues gig singer songwriter kind of thing That whole construct, there's a little bit here where it looks a little bit like glue. It, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. That's what she said. Um, not a major thing. Is there a tuner here? Tuner. Oh, we would have to put in the battery, which we would put in here. Come on, a Fishman system in a guitar for 209 bucks? I can look in there. That's neat. Very nice. Um, looks like it's all mahogany. I'll check, yes, except for this, uh, the, the fretboard is uh, rosewood, but the guitar is all mahogany. Nice little crossy inlays. What else? Compensated, compensated saddle here, or a bridge, or whatever you're gonna call it. Uh, binding made out of a different kind of wood. Wood binding, 18 frets, blah, blah, blah. Rosewood bridge.
also missing some fullness. It's a smaller guitar, obviously. Uh, playability is nice, but some body is missing. <laughs> like the sound is only around here and very much in the mid spectrum it might just be a 0012 whatever this body form is a characteristic but i don't know i really don't <laughs> then again 209 bucks for a nicely built acoustic i'll check it out i'll probably do a video with both of these acoustics together Lump them up together, that's what I do. Other, I mean, how do they do these for this money? Well, I hope you had fun. I'm gonna have, this is why I wanted to go to Toman because now I've got all this crap around here. I've got all these guitars standing around. I uh, don't have the space. Uh, but hey, that's what I do now, and I do it for you because you not so say more Harley Benton reviews. Here are more Harley Benton reviews. Uh, see ya. Right, Bruno?